Shut up and sit down. Hello guys, this is Andy from Big Mac's Workshop and Painting Studio and today I'm painting a Lord of the Rings ring wraith. This is the Knight of Umbar, which is uh, not a canon ring wraith, it's one of GW's creations and it is probably my favourite mod in the range. Uh, as always, um, it's a black prime we've based on and I am starting with black metal. Now I'm doing all the armour and things at first to give you something uh, to look at because obviously it's a lot of black. So uh, I'm working on the uh, the silver work at the minute. So it's plant metal for the armor and the blades, uh, which is a Vallejo uh, paint. And as you know by now, it is a particular favorite of mine. It gives you a nice, rich, dark um, feel to the armor. So once I've got the uh, black metal down, I apologize for this particular angle. I'm using hammered copper. Now for some reason I've decided that uh, I thought that the uh, hooves uh, looked armored. So I started off painting the hooves in the hammered copper. This was a bit of a mistake on my part because uh, it would have been a bit of a flit. So I uh, started working on the uh, island, uh, the eye protection. I uh, don't know what that's called. Uh, some kind of armor anyway for the horse. Um, and also uh, various things like the bell buckles, uh, the little shieldy looking thing, uh, the hilt of his sword, etc. I gave him a nice even coat of um, hammered copper. The entire thing, uh, all the armour work, uh, was then washed down with Agrox Earth, which I will use a hell of a lot of on this model. Uh, that and Null Oil uh, are used a hell of a lot, just to uh, keep the um, armour looking really dirty. I uh, went uh, with the uh, image from Google to get a nice uh, idea of how their armour should look, and use that as a reference art, a bit of a, a reference art for it. Next is Vallejo's Gunmetal, uh, which is a uh, very similar sort of uh, color tone to uh, Lead Belcher. I just prefer the Vallejo uh, metals over GW ones, they're not as thick, they tend to uh, have a much finer pigment, so they uh, tend to work a little bit better for me. I got Surf Shade again to uh, add some depth and some color to the uh, armor. I want the armor to look really, really worn and old. Uh, this guy's a ring race, so he's not uh, he's been dead for a while now. So I wanted it to um, represent that, that, that a sort of a stained look, well maintained but old, is what I was going for. And then it is the Leo's chain mail. Now I'm not sure what the uh, GW equivalent would be, but it's somewhere in between uh, chain uh, lead belcher and uh, rune lord. Uh, sorry, rune fang. So I'm uh, adding highlights, proper highlights now, just the uh, leading edges of the uh, arm plates uh, with the chainmail, bringing uh, the colour uh, to, the, uh, to the light and really adding uh, that extra touch of uh, brightness to the armour and to the blade. I'm also making sure that I'm not using the entirety of the um, planes of the uh, weaponry and the armour. Uh, so it's a natural uh, sort of a gradient highlight as well. Once I'd uh, got that down, I then applied two um, thin coats of Army Paint at Strong Tone. Now this is a, uh, a similar colour to Agrax, but it's a bit more brown. It's a bit darker, um, it's less uh, warm to, uh, to, uh, to, a pit, uh, to, the, to the eye. It's less warm to the eye, so it, it gives it a slightly different effect, and what you get is a much a uh, richer, darker colour from it. So I've uh, added the um, warmth from the Agrax before, and now I'm starting to uh, cool the, uh, the uh, armour down with uh, the strong tone just to make it a uh, bit darker. And finally, I'm using a top highlight of Chrome, uh, which is uh, pretty much um, the same as Rune Fang. It's just uh, I find it easier to uh, work with the, with the um, Consistency being a little bit finer uh, than Rune Fang. I tend to not uh, not use a GW not metals wherever where possible. And as as you can tell, I'm just using it on the edge highlights of the uh, model just to uh, get them uh, highlights to look really really uh, bright. Onto the saddle now, and uh, it is based with a Rhinox hide. Uh, a couple of thin layers on that. Uh, I do like Rhinox hide as a as a paint. It really makes a really good leather and. Surprisingly enough, I'm using 
seven different layers on this uh, hat saddle, even though it's, bar it's barely visible. You can only see it from that one angle. Um, so yeah, it's uh, again, it's just something to say you can look at. As I, obviously, uh, there's a lot of black on this model, so it's very difficult to uh, get a decent camera angle on it. Once I've uh, got the right side down, it's then chocolate brown by Vallejo Model Color which was just uh, painted pretty much over the top. The Rhinox side was there just to give it a more of a filter uh, look to it. And so the chocolate brown was actually more of the leather colour what we were uh, looking for. After the uh, chocolate brown it is Vallejo's model uh, mud brown which is a very very bright colour uh, going over the uh, chocolate brown um, which in retrospect could have been a mistake, but I, uh, when I started adding the um, washes to it, it started to uh, bring the colours together uh, and got a really nice sort of uh, texture to the model. Now I'm just using this as an edge highlight just on the uh, corners of the uh, model, just to make sure that I'm not throwing uh, too much of it out, uh, along the model. And now it's uh, another Agrox Earth shade onto the uh, model just to tie them colours together. It really does bring them together and just uh, blends that uh, edge highlights uh, down, down a touch just to make them actual highlights rather than just some weird uh, colour transition. What a, what a god. There you can see what, uh, what we're looking at right, right now. So, uh, there, again, I'm picking out the uh, corners now uh, with the mud brown. I'm using a, um, a Winder Newton double uh, zero at this point. Uh, just to make sure I don't go over the top of the mud brown. As I'm, although I'm trying to uh, accentuate the uh, highlighted areas, I don't want to uh, change the colour tone of the model too much. Now, the minute I'm painting the belt, which was uh, based in a dark rust, I wanted the leather to be a different tone of leather to the uh, saddle, so it's just a case of uh, Throwing some similar colours together, but uh, with enough difference in it to make it look like it's a separate piece. Uh, it is then highlighted with light rust, um, which surprisingly doesn't actually go straight over dark rust uh, particularly well. It's a very, very vibrant colour change. But once you start throwing the washes in again, and as it's on such a small area, the vibrant colour changes look pretty cool. So it's uh, just be aware of what you're doing when your um, painting such small areas, you can get away with a lot more stark highlights um, on, on, on certain areas if you've got that bit of a, a smaller area to work with. I'm just throwing a few edge highlights onto the um, trim at the minute, which is using the Leo Game Colors Brass. Now I'm keeping these uh, quite extended at the minute because uh, I've got a very, very bright coppery colour uh, um, as its base so I can really work around, uh, we've got plenty to work with. Once uh, the brass is set, it is uh, the Leo uh, Gold. Now as, you, uh, as I mentioned in my Necron video, I don't like the Gold Rangers uh, for most colours to be honest. But if you've got um, a brass underneath, it works pretty well. Um, so that's something definitely worth working with. You know, use, your, use your golds as a highlight rather than as a um, baseline, and you can actually get some uh, interesting results. And I'm just doing the same with the uh, gold as I did with the brass, just to really pick out those details and make it look extra shiny. I'm just um, building up the layers. I'm using um, several layers of the same um, coat here, uh, just to add extra definition with the gold. So next is Agro Surf Shade uh, to tie all them colours together, um, bringing that uh, starkness away a little bit, and adds, adds the extra depth to the model. Really adds some interest in there. Adding a wash really does help um, make the model look that bit more alive. Uh, adds the depth to the colour and uh, sometimes just take, it just takes away some mistakes sometimes what you make. Now as you can see I've also done the bit and bridle in the same way as the uh, extra bits of trim. So the teeth, 
is um, based up with uh, Valeo's game Air Earth, Terra Earth, to give it sort of a, a much darker base tone than what would normally work with. I wanted this uh, horse had a very interesting facial feature, it looked completely crazed. And as Dodge pointed out, with the um, eye protection, it does look a little bit demented. <laughs> it turns out I was um, adding these details to it to make it look that a little bit more nuts. So next layer was Carrack Stone. Um, again, picking out just, just picking out the teeth. I also started working on the um, hooves with these colours as well. Um, having realised that hooves were not armoured, in fact, and were actually just hooves. So I'm starting with the uh, same two colours again on the uh, hoof sections um, to actually have hoof colour hooves rather than some weird metal, uh, metal ones. Well, Shafty Bone is just gently um, laid over the top, um, making sure I'm not going all the way to the gums with these colours, uh, as the uh, gums are going to be a different colour and I want a sort of definition between the two locations. So essentially I'm just overbrushing on the, uh, on the teeth and just uh, being really gently feathering the uh, paint on the uh, hooves. I'm wanting to see some of the uh, Carrick Stone and you know, Terra Earth uh, showing through a little bit. So for the, um, the mouth area and its, uh, the inside of its nostrils, it is Tusk off uh, uh, just throwing a little bit in there into the uh, mouth area in its lips uh, just to add a little bit of colour to it as well uh, it really does uh, make the uh, mouth stand out a little bit uh, adds a little bit of extra colour to the model as well as I keep saying it's very it's a very dark model um, so you have to really work the detail together just to make it look interesting uh, next again is a shabty bone again on the teeth and the hooves uh, just uh, starting to add some actual highlights to the model uh, making them uh, teeth look separate now. I'm starting to uh, be very accurate and making sure I'm not getting the, into the gaps between the teeth. Although I'm going to be putting a wash on there, uh, the less paint what's in the gaps, obviously uh, the more defined the uh, teeth are going to be. So it's had a Agrax Shade Wash, and now I'm starting to apply Screaming Skull to the uh, topper edges of the teeth, really bringing the um, teeth to a nice bright finish. As it is an animal, they don't brush the teeth as much uh, as such, but they do seem to have good, um, good healthy looking teeth, don't they? So just a case of uh, making the uh, animal look healthy, if not a little bit mental. So. Again, uh, a bit of flayed one flesh uh, just to the upper, uh, the real points of the teeth and the hooves just to uh, really make them stand out and get that uh, nice bright finish what um, you'd expect to see in a, a set of teeth. I'm doing exactly the same as I did before on the hooves, it's a little bit gentle feathering so I can see the uh, alternate colours coming through. So onto the robes now, and this bit I decided I was going to go with uh, three different colours of um, black, um, which sounds a little bit ridiculous, but if you just bear with me, uh, because I wanted the uh, horse, the uh, bloke's robes, and the cloak on the uh, horse as well. I don't know what it's. I want them all to be different shades of black, uh, so you could differentiate between the sections of the model. Uh, it makes it look a bit more interesting. The Ring Wraith's cloak itself is uh, based in Despair Green, uh, which is thinned down and also mixed 50 50 with black. Uh, the horse is um, based in Rhinox Hide and uh, 50 50 black as well. And now, using uh, the Lowe's Black Primer, you can use any other black as well. It's just a case of getting that uh, base colour really, really dark to work up to the appropriate colours um, where it should be. So now I'm adding Rhinox Hide to the mix, throwing it a little bit brighter, adding extra colour to it, and uh, 
although I do seem to make it very very brown which is not something I wanted to see um, I'm hope um, so I'm gonna uh, start washing it back now after every layer of uh, paint on any of the locations I'm mixing non oil into it so it's a layer of paint non oil layer of paint non oil etc etc and I'm doing that across the entirety of the thing uh, unfortunately uh, footage on the uh, rider wasn't great so we've only got the one layer but he was essentially done in the same way but using despair green and um, similar chords from the skip the 75 range but as you can see I'm starting to uh, throw non oil onto the uh, rope from the horse just to start adding depth into the model as well before I start doing any of the highlights so once um, the wash had dried it is now dry and bark onto the um, highlighted areas of the uh, horse uh, again I'm, I'm really being uh, trying to be as accurate as I can to make just the edges stand out I don't want the horse to be brown um, I just wanted a brown sort of fur like color uh, showing through as its highlights rather than it just being a flat black grey horse I wanted the uh, sections of it to be different enough to uh, stand out the horse's cloak was started off with a black grey uh, by uh, scale 75 now any other uh, deep grey will work just as well uh, it's just one I happen to have to hand. I've uh, got a bit of a, a thing for the scale 75 range at the minute, but I think uh, they're really, really nice to use. And as you can see, I'm using a nice big brush as uh, I've got quite a large area to work with, and I'm going to be um, washing it down very, very frequently. Next is GW Session Grey, which has got kind of a, a greeny sort of tone to it as well, which is a quite interesting colour grey. I'm using that as a proper highlight now for the um, black grey and although it is very stark at this point um, that does get um, baited down again uh, once I've got the uh, next layer down and I'm just using it on all the uh, raised areas and I picked out the areas with the black grey what I wanted to highlight and then I uh, just start to go over it with the eshing grey so it's a non oil again uh, as I've already mentioned I use plenty of this on this model. Uh, it's a nice way of getting all the uh, ex extra highlights, the bits where we're not quite in the right spots, maybe a little bit sloppy or whatever, or the highlights were a little bit extreme. Uh, just tones them down just that little bit uh, before I can start going on to the next areas. So next is Skaven Black Dinge, which is added as a final highlight to the areas. Um, Again, very, very vibrant, but that wasn't going to be a problem because I'm going to put an oil wash on this after, and that really did the rest of the job what the non oil couldn't do, which was uh, just to make everything sort of not quite black, uh, which was what you'd expect from a, a ring ray from Lord of the Rings. You want some guy looking proper mean, and here we go. As you can see, if you look really closely, you've got the um, brown uh, black, the green black, and the grey black all added together onto the model to make it all uh, the same colour but subtly different to make it look interesting. So we've got some thank yous to uh, make now. Uh, we have got Rob Paints Models, our first £10 uh, Patreon, he's um, the knobs tier so massive thank you to him and uh, also a huge thanks to The Outpost who was our uh, latest affiliate. Um, if you want to get any uh, any of the materials we use or any gaming materials you can go to them and they will be able to supply you with everything you want. All the links for uh, the outposts and Patreon are in, a, in the description. If you want to see more of this sort of thing uh, please hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends. Check us out on Patreon as well guys. Uh, we've got multiple tiers, they all offer some kind of cool benefits and uh, you will be able to get extra, extra tutorials and early access to tutorials as well. So thank you for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ra!